Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Math Channel, and I'm now answering question number two from the Pure Mathematics um, P3 International A Level at Excel October 2021 session. This question number two here is about the modulus function, and it tells us in figure one we see a sketch of part of the graph with the equation y equals f of x, where f of x is equal to the modulus of 3x minus 13 plus 5, where x is an element of the real numbers. The vertex of the graph is shown at point P, and we've got to state the coordinates of the point P. Now, there's numerous ways that we could find the coordinates of point P. Uh, one of them is by using kind of like a transformation. Uh, we could think of, for example, the original function, say, let's call it um, the original function, say, y equals the modulus of x. And we could think of f of x being a transformation of this. So let's call the original function g of x. Let's say this is the original function g of x. And f of x would be a transformation of g of x such that the x has been replaced by 3x minus 13. So you have g, 3x minus 13. Okay, you replace the x with 3x minus 13, and then you add 5 to the whole thing. So that's a transformation you can say that is f of x if it's compared to the modulus function. Now the modulus function, the, the, the basic modulus function, which is called the parent function, the modulus of x would look something like this, where the vertex would have been at the origin. So we can think about what's happened to this um, origin. We can think, okay, first of all, we started with the origin or the vertex at the origin. Now the first thing that happens in this type of transformation is um, the things that are inside the function. You always start with what's inside the function, inside this bracket. You deal with those first, and then you deal with what's outside. And we always deal with those in the order of the opposite way, or the opposite to bid mass. So the opposite order to bid mass. So we'll deal with the things that are added or subtracted. So I'm gonna deal with the negative 13. Now I know that if I have a function, and um, I take away 13 for inside the function, hx minus 13, as compared to hx would be where you have to translate 13 spaces to the right. Okay, so there's a horizontal transformation or translation of 13 units to the right. So we can see that after this first transformation, this minus 13 part, what's going to happen is it's going to go to 13, 0. The x coordinates, you add 13 to them, and the y coordinates remain untouched. The second type of transformation that's taken place is, again, we're sticking with inside the function first, is 3 times x. So we can think of h3x, well, this is like a, again, horizontal, because it's inside the function, it only affects the x coordinates, and it's a horizontal stretch of factor one third, the reciprocal of x. So like here, when it's minus 13, you go 13 to the right. Kind of does the opposite. When it's 3 times x, you do... Um, the, the stretch factor is not 3, it's so 1 third because it's inside the fact function. So here we take the x coordinates and we divide them by 3. So here what I'm going to do is we've, we've now reached 13, 0 after that first part. Now that 13 is going to be divided by 3. We'll multiply by a third, divided by 3. So this becomes 13 over 3 and 0. And then finally what happens is this plus 5 part, which is like hx plus 5. Now this represents a um, vertical translation of five units. So you're not going anywhere horizontally, you're going vertically five units. So the y coordinates, you add five to them, the x coordinate stays the same. So the, the point 13, 3, 0 ends up being at 13, 13 over 3, sorry, 5. Okay, so this is where you end up with P. P ends up being 13 over 3 and 5. Okay, now that's the coordinates of P. So we can say p, the coordinates of p are 13 over 3, 5, and 13 over 3 is 4 and 1 third. 4 and 1 third, 5. I'll just like it, write it in mixed number form, and that's the answer there. That's one way of answering this question, okay, using transformations. That's probably the easiest way because even though, you know, I took a bit of time to explain it, when you were doing this in an exam, you can pretty much, uh, you know, just see this. That's why it says state. It doesn't mean, it doesn't say calculate, so you don't have to actually show these steps, you can just state it once you realize that, okay, look, there's 
Um, basically, once you realize that this has taken place, which is quite easy to spot from that, okay, first I've got to uh, move, um, you've got to think about the origin moving 13 spaces to the right, then divided by 3, 13 over 3, and vertically 5 spaces up. So you can quite quickly get that without having to spend too much time. Um, there's an alternative way also of finding the coordinates of P, which I'll also show you if you're not too comfortable with the trans transformations. Um, which actually you, you should really be because um, we need to know that stuff. But anyway, there's an alternative way, and that way is by looking at the, um, you know, the positive and the negative uh, parts of the graph. Okay, so it's called um, the positive argument of the graph, which is this part here, where you just leave it as it is. So this would be the equation of this part would be y equals. So you leave this as it is. So it's three x minus 13 plus 5 so this would be y equals 3x minus 8 that's the this this part of the graph has that equation and then you have the negative argument of the graph where you change the sign of this uh, part in the modulus that's y equals negative 3x plus 13 and um, plus 5 so you end up with y equals negative 3x plus 18 so that's the that's the uh, positive the negative argument of the graph where you change the sign of the modulus and then what we can do is we can say okay they where these two where this intersects with this will be where p is so we can solve these equations simultaneously so i can replace this y here with 3x minus 8 so i can say 3x minus 8 is equal to minus 3x plus 18 that's going to show us where they intersect and then i can um, add 3x to both sides that gives me 6x and i can um, add 8 to both sides, that gives me 26. So x equals 26 over 6, which is equal to 13 over 3, as we found, which we said is 4 and 1 third. Um, 4 and 1 third. And that's where we can find the x coordinate of p. And to find the y coordinate of p, so we know this is 13 over 3, the y coordinate of p, we can just substitute into one of these equations. Um, this x value, we find what y is, so we can use this one. It's um, probably easier. So 3 times 13 over 3, minus 8, 3 cancels, you've got y equals 13 minus 8, which is 5. So that's the y coordinate as we found earlier. So those are two alternative methods of finding the coordinates of P. Okay, there might be other methods as well, but those two come to mind. Then the question part B, B part 1 says, state the range of the function f. Now the range of the function f the range means the values it can take on the y, where it exists in the y, y direction. Okay, so I've drawn this line here to show the limit of this function uh, vertically is up to this point here. And we know that this point is 4 and 1 third in the x and 5 on the y. So this point here is 5. Okay, so the lowest this function ever reaches is 5. So that means its range, we can say the range of f of x, we can just say f of x, it's always going to be 5 or more. It can never be below 5. It will never go below this point. So the range of f of x, we can say that means f of x is greater than or equal to 5. And there's the answer to part 1. Simple as that. Let me write that a bit neater. Okay, that's the range of the function f of x. And part 2, it says find f, f4. So what that means is substitute 4 into the function f. And then substitute the result of that into the function f. Okay, what it means is find f of f4. That's what it basically means. So we've got to find what f4 is first. So f4 is when you substitute 4 into this function. So replace the x with 4. So you have the modulus of 3 times 4 minus 13 plus 5. So this is 3 times 4, which is 12. So you've got the modulus of 12 minus 13. Close the modulus and plus 5. That gives you the modulus of negative 1 plus 5. Now this is where you've got to be careful. The modulus of negative 1 means how far minus 1 is from 0 on the number line, ignoring its sign. So the modulus of negative 1 is going to be just 1. So that's 1 plus 5, which is equal to 6. So we know f4 is equal to 6. We've got to find f f4. So that means we've got to put 6 in, inside. So we know that f4 is equal to 6. So therefore, we've got to find f6. f6 would be f f4. So now we've got to take the do the same thing this time with um, replacing the x in this function with 6. So you have 3 times 6 minus 13, close modulus, plus 5, which is 18 minus 13, close modulus, plus 5, 
which is the modulus of 5 plus 5. Now the modulus of 5 is 5, so you get 5 plus 5, which is 10. So we can say, therefore, f, f4 is equal to 10. And there's the answer for part 2. And that's pretty simple stuff for part B. And now we're going to move on to part C. Now part C says solve using algebra and showing you're working this inequality 16 minus 2x is greater than the modulus of 3x minus 13 plus 5. Now we, we already worked out that this side of the graph is y equals 3x minus 8. And this side of the graph is y equals negative 3x plus 18. We worked that out in this part of the question. Minus 3x plus 18 and 3x minus 8. Okay, so I could, uh, now we need to, we also worked out that this point is 4 and 1 third and 5. Okay, it's a bit messy there, just the coordinates of P, I'll just write it here, are 4 and 1 third and 5. That's what we worked out earlier. So I know that this point here is 18 because this, the y-intercept of this graph is 18. Okay, and we've got to see where the line y equals 16 minus 2x is greater than our um, modulus graph. So let's draw the line y equals 16 minus 2x or sketch it on the same graph. Okay, so the, gra the, gr the, the graph here, we see that it crosses the y-axis at 16, which is going to be below this slightly. Okay, and we can see that it crosses the x-axis when y equals 0. So in y equals 0, you have 16 minus 2x equals 0. So we've got x equals 8. You can have 16 equals 2x, x equals 8. Now this is 4 and 1 third, so x equals 8 is going to be somewhere over here. Okay, and we know that the, the gradient of this graph is going to be kind of uh, less steep than this one because these are 3, and minus 3, this is going to be negative 2, so it's going to be less steep. So I'm going to draw a line. Um, make it a bit thinner, going through 16 and having a gradient less than that. So I'll just draw it like this and then move the 8 along to make it there. Okay, so that that's a, a sketch of this graph, which we're going to call, or we, we know is, y equals 16 minus 2x. So this is y equals 16 minus 2x. So we want to find the range of values of x where this line is above our graph here. And we can see that they intersect in these two places. So I need to find those two points of intersection. And I can see that between these two values of x, between this value of x and this value of x, okay, the, gla the, the, the line 16 minus 2x is greater than our line because it's above it. So first thing we need to do is find the coordinates of the two points here. Let me call them point A and point B. So I can see point A. Point A is where the line 16 minus 2x intersects with the line y equals minus 3x plus 18. So if I say um, 16 minus 2x is equal to negative 3x plus 18, just solving these simultaneously, I will find the x coordinate of the point A, which is what I need. So I can add 3x to both sides. That's going to give me minus 2x plus 3x, which is x. And have 18 take away 16 from both sides that will give me 2 18 minus 16 is 2 so x equals 2 that's the coordinate of this point here okay and to find point b we have to find where this same line 16 minus 2x intersects with the other line y the other argument which is y equals 3x minus 8 so we can replace this y here with 16 minus 2x so you have 16 minus 2x equals 3x minus 8 so we're going to add 8 to both sides, so 16 plus 8 equals 3x plus 2x. That gives me 24 is equal to 5x. So we've got to divide both sides by 5 to so end up with 24 over 5 is equal to x. So therefore we can say x is equal to 4 and 4 fifths. That's the point um, B. So that's 4 and 4 fifths. And here we have 2. So we can see that the line y equals 16 minus 2x is above or greater than our modulus function between these two values of a. So our solution therefore would be x is between 2 and 4 and 4 fifths. Those are the range of values of x which make that inequality true. 
when x is greater than 2 and less than 4 and 4 fifths, this will remain true. Okay, so then there's a solution to part C. Okay, now for part D. It says the graph with equation y equals f of x is transformed onto the graph with equation y equals a f x plus b. So y equals a times f of x plus b. And it tells us the vertex of the group, the new, the new vertex of the graph of this after the transformation is 420. So this is 4 and 1 third and 5. That's the original function. So in this transformation, two things have taken place. You have a horizontal transformation, which is a translation of B units horizontally. Okay. And then you've had a vertical stretch take place where you multiply the whole function by the, the number A. Okay, so we've got to try and figure out what's happened. So we started off with the point P, which is 4 and 1 third, 5. And the new, the image of P after this transformation has now become 4 uh, and 20. Okay, so we can see that the horizontal transformation, which is represented by Fx, Fx plus B, uh, the 4 and 1 third became four okay the four and one third became fourth so it means it has moved uh, one third of a unit towards the left okay it's gone from four and one third it's gone this direction okay horizontally so that means b must be equal to okay uh, one over three okay b must be equal to one over three because when you have f x plus one over three you move one third of a th one third of a unit to the left okay the opposite sign of this so that will take you from four and one third to four going down by one third so b must be one third and for the a f of x this part of it here that you have basically taken the y coordinates so you've got the 20 sorry the 5 became a 20. the 5 the y coordinate of p which is 5 it became 20 and it becomes 20 here by multiplication. So you have to multiply by 4 to become 20. So that means a must be 4. So if the, the, what we're going to have is y equals 4 times f of x plus 1 third. That's what's going to take you from 4 and 1 third to 420. Because you move um, a third of a space to the left. That takes you to 4 on the x coordinate. And you multiply the y coordinate by 4. That takes you to 20 for your y coordinate. So B is one third and A is four. And that's the answer to part D of this question, which is the final part of the question. And we've completed this um, question now. Thank you for watching. Um, other questions from this particular paper of October 2021, you will find in the, in the uh, link that should appear somewhere over here. You could also find the playlist in the description box below and in the description of the playlist for this paper you will find the paper itself the pdf of the paper um, in this playlist over here you should find um, other questions to do with this topic of, of functions um, and um, yeah that's from p3 you can subscribe to my channel by clicking on this link if you wish to and see you soon thank you for watching